This recipe for sautéed chicken breast in honey mustard sauce with pearl onions and broccoli is sponsored by Skillshare. More on them later. This is a crowd-pleasing and pretty healthy weeknight meal. I think it's also a great little project on which to practice some basic and very useful home cooking techniques. First, the onions, like half a pound. If you boil pearl onions for a minute, they become very easy to peel. You just shock them in ice water to stop the cooking and to make the skins contract and split. Then I just take one out, cut off its root end, and then and you can pretty easily peel them as long as you don't get hung up on saving the outer edible layer. Rather than peel, you can just kind of squeeze the onion out of itself, but then it goes ballistic in the literal sense of the word. I love pearl onions. They are super old-fashioned, but I'm going out on a limb and hoping that at this point they've become retro and cool. You can buy them frozen and peeled, by the way. Alrighty, those are all done. I'll just throw them in a bowl now to prep the broccoli. Broccoli is my first choice green vegetable to accompany saucy dishes, because you can use the florets to mop up sauce the same way that you could with some bread or some mash. I like to just hold it upside down and cut off the florets. The small ones I'll leave alone, the mid-sized ones I'll cut in half, the big ones I'll cut into thirds, and in those go into a bowl. Now the chicken breast. Technically that is one breast, though we often refer to each half of it as one breast. You could call the whole thing a full breast. Control yourself in the comments, gentlemen. Modern factory farm chicken breasts are just way too thick for sautéing. They take too long to cook, they have insufficient surface area. You don't have to accept that. Cut it in half along its horizontal axis. Make it half its original thickness. Not only will that cook a lot better, it's also a more reasonable single portion of meat. If you're worried about getting the pieces to equal thickness, I'd suggest getting your eye right down level with the chicken. Whoops, my knife is going to be in your way. Other side. There we go. Anyway, get your eye right down level with the chicken, and you can see pretty clearly if you're getting it right. Don't freak out. That's the chicken's blood, not mine. Okay, now, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to do something that I do not recommend. I do not think that you should season the chicken. The internet freaks out whenever I don't season something, so fine, I'll season these with salt and pepper, at least this side for now. Same amount of salt as I would use if I was going to eat these plain. I'll do it because the orthodoxy says so, but not because I think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea, and I'll show you why. Alrighty, here's a pan with a little bit of water to steam the broccoli. And here's one of those foldable steamer basket thingies. I love these. In it goes. Lid on top, heat on high. Alrighty, big fry pan goes on medium-high heat. I like the tall sides of this one for any number of reasons, but also because they help to contain at least some of the splatter. Splatter is a big issue when sautéing chicken breast. When your steamer rig is steaming, you can put in your broccoli. If you're not a terribly confident cook, I say do it right now, before you start the chicken. If you are a confident cook, you probably don't need this video, but I'll say nonetheless that I'd recommend starting the broccoli when the chicken is almost cooked. The timings will work out better that way, but it can be a lot to juggle at once. Little olive oil in the pan, and I'm going to slosh it around the edges, because I have a little trick for doing chicken breasts. That thin tail at the bottom of each piece always overcooks, so I say lay it up against the side of the pan where it will get much less heat. This also has the advantage of helping you fit all four pieces into a 10-inch pan at once. There's their little tails dangling up in the air. I'll go ahead and season the other sides now because the internet says that I have to, even though I think it's a bad idea, and I will show you why. All right, after they've been in for three or four minutes, side one should be browned and they should easily release off the pan. I'm now letting the tails cook down in the pan where they should now fit because the meat has shrunk a bit with cooking. I know people say that oiling the meat and not the pan will help mitigate splatter. If that's true at all, it's a very minor effect. The main reason chicken breast splatters a ton is that it takes forever to cook through. But these are going to go faster because we have halved them. The broccoli is probably done by now. You can tell by poking it with a fork, which you can now use to lift the steamer basket out of the pan. And I would just let those sit in the basket uncovered for now. Turn off the heat and dump out the water, and then into the pan I'll put a little bit of butter and just let it melt in the residual heat. Anytime you're going to make a pan sauce like we are, I think that you want to prioritize the fond on the bottom of the pan over the crust on the meat. That means that if the fond is looking like it might burn, as this is, turn the heat down, even if you wish you had a better crust on the meat. Maybe geniuses can perfectly marry these two competing interests, but I shall never be perfect, so I prefer to manage my imperfections rather than deny them. I'll flip these one more time just to make sure the surface of those tails gets cooked and out they come. They don't have to be fully cooked at this stage. These are maybe a hair undercooked inside, which is good. 
real quick before the pan burns in the onions go and try to let those get as much color as possible before your fond is in imminent danger of burning as this is and in goes one of these handy mini cartons of chicken broth, eight ounces or thereabouts is fine and start scraping the bottom with a wooden spoon. Summon forth the upside down bear and I'll start with just a tablespoon or two of honey. You can always add more later. Same deal with the mustard. This is Dijon, but anything is fine. Tablespoon or two. Then real quick, grab at most a teaspoon of starch. This is potato starch. You could use cornstarch and make a slurry with it in an equal quantity of water. You probably don't want to do this really far in advance because it can dry out. In that goes. Mix this around and cook it a couple of minutes until it's starting to look thick and saucy, then give it a taste. I'm gonna want more honey, and I'm gonna want some vinegar. The reason I didn't put in any vinegar before is that mustard generally has vinegar, and depending on what kind you used, the sauce might already be acidic enough for you. It tastes like it needs some salt, so in it goes, right? I'm definitely not foreshadowing any problems here. I'm gonna do a little shake of cayenne for Chef John. I think the spice balances the sweetness and makes this taste a little bit less like kid food, though you may indeed be making kid food, so you do you. That tastes perfect to me now. Perfectly seasoned. Definitely not foreshadowing doom. Fish out an onion and eat it and decide if they need some additional cooking, which you could absolutely provide right now. You could also make this sauce thicker or thinner at this stage by adding water or slurry. I want it pretty thick. I want it to coat my chicken and back in the chicken goes. Just toss everything around to get the meat coated in the sauce and getting everything heated up again. You could just leave it in the pan now until the internal temp of the chicken reads 165 Fahrenheit, 74 Celsius. Toasted sesame seeds are a classic pairing with honey. These are black sesame seeds which look kind of cool, or they look like bugs. We report, you decide. Here's our melted butter. I'll throw some salt in there and then the broccoli. Cover it up and shake it all about to get everything coated. I might also reheat this a little bit in there, but if we'd left it in there the entire time, by now it'd be really overcooked. Down the chicken goes next to the broccoli on the plate. I'll definitely want some more onions and some extra sauce. Check out how luscious that looks. Cut right into that, get a bite, and it's real good, but it is over-seasoned. It is too salty. How can this be? We tasted that sauce in the pan. It was perfect before, except we seasoned the chicken too, in keeping with orthodoxy. And when we returned the chicken to the pan, the salt on the outside dissolved right into the sauce, and now the sauce is too salty. There's no point in seasoning the meat with a dish like this, where every bite is gonna be coated in sauce. If you just season the sauce, it's easier to control the seasoning in the finished dish. That's just the advice of one reasonably practiced person to another who is trying to learn a new skill, which is exactly what Skillshare is all about, an online community where people can teach you all kinds of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Thousands of classes, like Abby Lossing's Animation for Illustration, creating layered GIFs with Photoshop and After Effects. Photoshop allows you to keep the hand-drawn quality of your illustrations, but by using After Effects, you can create a lot more movement in your final animation. I want to try that. And she's got a whole logical sequence of lessons and assignments for me, plus a community where I can get feedback on my homework. A lifetime of accumulating often unrelated creative skills has opened a lot of doors for me, and it could for you too. Sign up with my link in the description and you'll get a free two-month trial membership. After that, annual membership is less than $10 a month, a steal for unlimited access, especially compared to conventional schools and seminars. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and remember, season your sauce not your chicken.